No, we're good. We're good. This is uh, how Georgia failed to lock up Young Thug and YSL. I don't know who YSL is. Now, Young Thug was facing the downfall of his empire. Okay. For a long time now, Young Thug was facing the downfall of his empire. Hit with a 56 count RICO indictment, Thugger and the YSL crew had the full weight of Fulton County against them as they looked to make an example. Wait. Gunna, Young Thug, Walter Murphy, Slime Life, Shoddy, Lil Duke. Uh oh. I only know two of these guys Young Thug and Gunna. A lot of them as a criminal street gang. But as of right now, Thugger is finally a free man once more. With a far better sentence than most people would have imagined when it seemed like he was going to be jammed up for the rest of his life. But none of this would have been possible in the first place if it weren't for the state of Georgia pulling off the legal equivalent of fumbling the bag and destroying their own chances to achieve the results they put so much time, effort, and thugger, cash into. Thugger. You think they're gonna be on some rookie shit like that? But they fucked up the case 45 times. It should have been a mistrial. Even if he got convicted, he was gonna get off on appeal. 100% no way, no how. The fans don't move like that. It's your boy Luis, the, and this is how the Fulton County failed to destroy Young Thug and YSL. When the man lesser known as Jeffrey Williams was taken into custody, it seemed like he might never see the outside world ever again. Charged under the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act, Thug and 27 other Racketeering and gang charges. What did he do, bro? Wait, what did he do? And why did I miss the whole like era of free young thug? When did he go to prison? Wait. There's many of whom would take pleas long before now were hit with everything from murder, robbery, and theft to carjackings, assaults, and more. The jury selection process was the longest in history of Georgia, taking almost a year and, in turn, the trial took over 18 months to reach its conclusion on Halloween 2024. That day, word spread that at long last, the YSL leader might be willing to take a plea deal. And while he did plead guilty to involvement in gang-related activity, he wasn't happy to let the prosecutors get their way. At that point, Thug almost faced 25 years behind bars and 20 years behind bars if the state's recommendation for sentencing was accepted. But for, his lawyer Brian Steele charges? revealed that he refused to cooperate in the way that they wanted by not labeling himself a gang leader or claiming his music incited violence. But the state offered him 15 years on probation, but they keep piling on these conditions. He just said, he made up his mind, he said, I'm just gonna go with it. I gotta get home. Judge may not let me home, but I'm not doing these conditions and admit that I'm the leader and I'm involved in the killing and my music just promoted everybody to do it. He's not going to do that. So he. Bro, music, music cannot, bro. Music cannot incite violence, right? How how can that even be a charge? Like at the end of the day, music is art, right? So how, how can it incite violence? It's not like he's out there saying, yeah, yeah, go do all these things. Do them. Do them now. Do them now. And you'll be under the wing of my gang. You know what I'm saying? He did not do that. And that's how we wound up here. Thug himself then spoke as proceedings drew to a close, issuing a heartfelt apology to everyone involved while also insisting that he would learn from this. I take full responsibility for my crimes or my charges. I want to say sorry to my family, my mom. My mom got 11 kids. I can't say all their names, you know. My managers, my kids is not here. Really, everybody that got something to do with this situation, I want to say sorry for just like, you know, being, having so much time investing into this, you know. And, um... With the rappers asking for three years on an ankle monitor with time. But is it the music's fault that you feel violent listening to it? And who tells you to react a certain way to the music? The, the artist? Like, it, did he sit here and, and tell you to, like, you have to, you have to go crazy when you hear my music? Time served. Thug also vowed to participate I don't know a lot in a about Young Thug. Concert and donate money to the city of Georgia. But interestingly, the conditions that he really fought for was to be able to work with the man that everyone had previously labeled a snitch in Ghana. As well as Mr. Sergio Kitchens. He's a phenomenal artist. He goes performer known as Gunna, G-U-N-N-A. Mr. Williams okay, and yeah. Mr. Kitchens are contractually obligated and they frequently perform music.
but that would be uh, that would be the artist creating the problem not the music so you can't you can't label the music itself as the reason it's inciting violence yeah, yeah they do promote like like using drugs and and doing all that but like it would still at the end of the day it's the artist right but the music itself is art now I'm I'm just like genuinely curious because they were using that as a charge, right? But like they can't use music as evidence as seen in YNW Melly's case. They tried to they tried to use they tried to use uh m murder on my mind as as like evidence for him committing the murder. Which is just stupid. Like, everyone knows YNW Melly did it, okay? Everyone knows that, but he didn't... The song was made prior to that. <laughs> They're trying to say that lyrics and rap can be used as evidence. Yeah, I don't think it can. Because they the judge dismissed that in, in Melly's case. Because it's just art. It's not, it's not evidence. Following the statements from both defense and prosecution, the judge was left to weigh everything up. And she took some time considering all the factors. Was willing to entirely yeah. dismiss one of the gang counts and was willing to entirely dismiss this, you know, machine gun count. Was willing to give a sentence that permitted Mr. Williams to walk out of the door today and therefore does not seem exactly. to be particularly worried that Mr. Williams, if on the streets, would be a danger to society. I'm taking that into consideration and in crafting my sentence. Once it was all said and done, she decided to remove the prison side of the sentence yeah. in favor of time served. And yeah, but like, it, it, it doesn't matter. Today's genre of music, you don't know who's doing it. You don't know who's really, you know. Yeah. So we actually go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, Emily. Well, I mean, Melly deserves it. And for the people that are saying free Melly, bro, dude's an actual demon. Dude's an actual demon. It, cold blooded. Looked at his, uh, at, like, his brother's face and then shot his already dead body multiple times, bro. I'll see you later. I'll see you later. Yeah, Melly, Melly's a, he's a demon. And let him re-enter the world on probation and with many special conditions attached that could land him back inside if he ever violates them. After yeah. you serve your 15 years of probation, if you have been successful on that probation, and I sincerely hope that you Yo, are, 15 then years at is the end crazy. of that 15 years, I will commute the entire rest of any service portion of your sentence to time served. After two years, the rundown of what they can charge him with was five years in prison, which has been commuted to time already served, allowing him to walk free. The time served is followed by 15 years of probation, but an additional 20 years are backloaded, meaning that he could serve this time in custody if he violates probation. So in a way, it's a 40 year sentence. Right. The thug also got to leave court in the back of a Mercedes that day rather than head back inside. Considering this was the longest trial in the history of the state of Georgia, Fulton County probably wanted to get a whole lot more out of this. Because not only is Thug free on probation and with commuted sentences, but other defendants like Qua and Lil Rod have walked away in the same way. Instead of suffering heavy losses, YSL are now celebrating. So too is Thugger's girl, Mariah the Scientist, who Thugger. took aim at non-believers before hopping straight on a plane to see Jeffrey. Now, after your long, you know, speech and talking down on the haters, if he if he messes up his probation, he's going back and he's going back for life, right? I mean, you don't want to count your chickens before they hatch, right?
While some would say justice has been served, this is a catastrophic blow for Fulton County's DA and the prosecution. Because to say that they pulled out all the stops to paint YSL as demonic would be an understatement. The only problem is that once it was time to take it to trial, they proved themselves totally incompetent and incapable of proving what they once seemed so sure of. From the very outset of Thug being taken into custody, the prosecution and DAs used every hearing and public statement to depict him as a villain, making him out to be more of a mob boss rather than a musician whenever possible. And you see the shadow in the back of the room. He's the one directing traffic. He is the one they're all afraid of. He's the one that's King Slime. He's pulling the shots. King Slime. He's the most dangerous of the 28 judge. And I, I implore you not to grant him a bond. He is dangerous. The setup they've given to you is actually going to be less control, not more. If he gets a burner judge, and the court may know this, a lot of the communications that Mr. Williams is on is on FaceTime because it's not traceable, it's not trackable. And we know that to be their MO. He gets a burner, he gets in there, he runs his gang from inside, and he won't get that, and no one's gonna throw his cell. And from a defendant slipping a Percocet into Thug's hand, through to the chaos that ensued when Lil Rod was- Wait, what? Slipped a Percocet to- Dude, when Lil Rod was escorted into the court, it initially seemed like YSL were going to make their job easy for them. Take a look at the part we highlighted here. Do you see this? Right there. According to court motions, Young Thug's fellow defendant, Khalif Adams, passed Percocet to Young Thug under the guise of a handshake right in front of the entire courtroom. With all that was going down, even the hip hop media started to look at Thug Bro. like he might really be this ruthless man that they were maintaining he was. They must really have him in some solitary confinement type shit for real. I agree, I think so. Because again, I'm not trying to be funny, but drugs is prevalent. In jail. That's why I'm fucking yeah. these stupid ass fans. Y'all had me thinking people just make good music. You know how powerful somebody got to be for somebody to <laughs> walk up there and, and hand them a perk? Fans. That's some shit. Word. That court. is true, bro. You know how powerful somebody got to be? I'm scared to death of him. I don't care what dummy mission he sends me on, I'm going to carry doing. it out. And for what it's worth, they initially seemed to have plenty of evidence of Thug's true character, ranging from snitches to alleged wiretap audio of Thug discussing their legal operation. In a 2020 conversation about a vehicle theft with another defendant, the state alleges that Williams directed him to tell another, if he don't take it back, he gonna die. While in a May 2021 conversation with multiple defendants, prosecutors claimed that Williams asked, y'all ain't beat him up or shot him yet? Then he stated, y'all getting sucked. What? Uh Alongside claims that he was the man who had rented the car involved in the killing of Donovan Big Nut Thomas, whose death at an ATL barbershop literally sparked I don't a know this is. gang war. You also have the testimony of guys like YSL Woody, who seemed happy to throw Thug under the bus to save their own necks. You need to hit so smart and he moves different. It's hard to keep up with how he moves. What do you mean? So he, 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 he just, he not moving how he used to, he used to move. Right. What are these he doubled up? But he wants this nigga so bad that he moves his back records. Plus, there was their questionable decision to use lyrics from Thug's music and social media posts. Yeah, this in should the trial, not be allowed. Which would remove their right to freedom of expression as artists. With all that, Rico expert Jeff Grell thought they might be cooked. Williams' lawyers and other defendants will probably argue they were intending to look like tough guys. They were intending to look like street thugs, but that they weren't really street thugs. He's a famous rapper. Why would he be screwing around with this kind of stuff? But from the prosecutor's I'm standpoint, intrigued. it's like, look. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And there's a lot of smoke here. Not just song lyrics, but renting the car and other conversations that he apparently recorded with some of the other gang members about engaging in criminal activity, essentially planning the crimes. These are all things that prosecutors can use to argue. How could he not know what he was doing? As a prosecutor, you would argue that, you know, when was the last time you talked to somebody about a clearly criminal act and helped them plan it out? Normal people don't do that sort of thing. Clearly, True. the pressure was on. Because before long, YSL's gonna, arguably the label's second biggest artist after Thug himself, took an offered plea to escape jail. In the process, being labeled a snitch. Maybe unfairly, but I'll get into that. With all that was going in the state an of Fulton County's snitch? favor, it seemed like all they had to do was get through the case without incident, and they would have Pretty they snitch wanted. on. But at every turn, it felt like they conspired to screw it up completely, and there are a few key players that made that happen.
Leading the charge for YSL Rico case was Fulton County DA Fannie Willis. As the crew was rounded up, Willis tried to use them as an example of everything that her regime wouldn't tolerate, promising harsh, long sentences for anyone involved in the street life at a deep level. Get out of this county or expect to start seeing sentences that go life plus because I am not going to negotiate with gang uh, members. That's a terrible I am look. not going to allow pleas. We are going to find you. We are going to convince you. And we're going to send you to the prison for the rest of your days. And I'm not apologizing for that. Throughout the trial, she would remain a fixture of prosecution and host press conferences where she'd maintain that Thug and co-conspirators were going down. The only problem is that her credibility was about to take a major knock. For one thing, Labo co-founder YSL Mondo had previously been represented by Willis and claimed that the tough talk was all just an act. This is not her character, this is not who she is. He said during a phone call with Rolling Stone, I had auntie to nephew, mother to son type of talks with her. I know this is not her character. This is what made me start looking at the YSL case like I know it's bigger than just her. That's just not her character, he continued. She's almost like not really street, but she understands what's going on, bro. She understands life to a certain degree. She ain't I'm getting trying to confused. take all these little black dudes down. She ain't that type of woman, man. I'm telling you, she's not. For her part, Willis- So, so he's speaking on her character, right? That, that she is not like what she's presenting herself to be? I, I I got confused on that part. Stonewalled the whole I'm trying thing, to follow it. Acting like they weren't as friendly as he suggested. In a reply to Mondo, she said, All conversations with him are attorney slash client protected. And past confirming I represented him would be inappropriate. Oh, I think I can say I liked him, she continued. I hope he is well. But unfortunately for Fanny, the knocks on her credibility just kept coming. Because word began to spread that there might have been an alleged personal dynamic to her quest to put Thug behind bars. Soon, people were claiming that she had previously been sleeping with Big Nut, the man who what? Really kickstarted the gang war we see in Atlanta today. In fact, 1090 Jake basically said it was an open secret. Young Thug was involved so in this the same way you said the best kept secret in LA was the murder of Pac. Yeah. In Atlanta, apparently everybody knows that Fanny, whatever her name funny, is. Funny was had a relationship with Nut. Okay. Nut gets killed. Now she's prosecuting the people that were allegedly behind it. Number one, is that illegal? I don't know, but it, it kind of gives a motive in which she has a personal connection to the case. Will so, that get her thrown off the case? I think it, it should. should. It, it should. should prove it. Then it would go from bad to worse. When she was accused of the same thing by none other than Donald Trump. And I probably have another one. They say there's a young woman, uh, a young racist in Atlanta. Say racist. And they say, I guess they say that she was after a certain gang and she ended up having an affair with the head of the gang or a gang member. And this is a person that wants to indict me. She's got a lot of problems, but she wants to indict me to try and run for some other office. Well, at the same time as she Wait, was attempting what? to her away for decades, she was also involved in indicting Donald on election tampering charges. But talented as she may be as a lawyer, there would soon be two landmark cases that her private life has messed up. Because the news emerged that she had an affair with a former deputy oh Nathan my Lane, God. who was forced to leave the case. And as soon as this story broke, that was another big trial that was left in tatters. She has just stabbed the case right in the heart. Clark D. Cunningham, an expert in legal ethics and a law professor at Georgia State University, told- Dude, this is the last person you want on any case, bro. She's out here sleeping with everyone. She's having an affair with everyone. It's the last person you want running your, your prosecution. The New York Times. Since the Trump proceedings came to a close, she has forced her efforts back on the YSL case. But she is one of many individuals involved in the prosecution that have been accused of wasting the court's time by the judge, Paige Reese Whitaker. Can you all please communicate to everybody in the DA's office to not have any sort of ex parte communications with the court? More confusion as the Young Thug trial continues. It started when a court spectator sent an email to the prosecution criticizing their work. This is definitely not an isolated incident because after that strong start from them, they mishandled basically everything. In a RICO trial, it is claimed that prosecutors must prove that the defendants committed at least two specific offenses within a 10-year period that were part of a racketeering scheme. Uh -huh. If found guilty, penalties for RICO include up to 20 years in prison, a monetary fine, or both. 
And ever since they started calling witnesses to the stand, they've had a hard time being able to do that and left people shocked with how poorly they handled it. Like I have said and I keep saying, this case needs to be taken out of the jurisdiction of Fulton County and to yeah. a real courtroom. This entire trial if it's gang has related. been a circus. At times, you had hilarious incidents like the testimony of Adrian Bean, who got so blazed before his time on the stand uh -huh. that he couldn't give them anything. I'm so high right now, y'all. I'm about to go sleep on y'all now. After making that confession, the lead prosecutor then handed Bean a bottle of water and Judge Glanville reassured him a break was coming soon. Then you had people who just didn't want to give them anything, like Lil Woody. A fellow rapper from the ATL, Woody was brought in as what they thought was a star witness. Instead, he spent most of his time in the courtroom telling them that he couldn't recall. And when he wasn't doing that, he was actively telling the jury that he made up allegations against Thug to get the law off his back. Wait. Wait, their own witness is, like, uh, playing against them? Wait, wait. He's the imposter among them. It may seem like I'm trying to help Doug out. I'm not trying to help him out. I don't care nothing about him. What he got going on, nothing. I care about the truth. The truth was, I was going through a phrase in my life, and I have put all the blame on him. I don't know what he did. I don't know what he got going on. But y'all got me on the stand, and I'm telling the God and his truth. Leave me out of this. I made all these stories up, put the blame on him to get myself out of the situation because the police told me they want a big fish and I'm a little fish. They ain't who I want. So when they told me that, my only motive was to convince them that I'm telling the truth about this guy right here and I'm lying. That was a major blow for the That's crazy. The case. But what's crazy is that the man who was overseeing proceedings didn't help either. Although he meant to be unbiased, Judge Earl Glanville wound up being one of the biggest detriments to the entire prosecution, no matter how much he went out of his way to try and benefit them. Alongside assigning one lawyer for YSL defendant Christian Eppinger, an essay on professionalism after he refused to buy lunch for another legal counsel, Glanville made his contempt for thug supporters known by lashing out at those daring to interrupt him. And if anybody's in the gallery and you can't otherwise control yourself or otherwise make, you want to make any inappropriate comments, then you can leave at this point in time. No harm will come or, or, or nothing else will occur. But if you remain in this courtroom and make, it, and make any outbursts, I'll have you arrested. Then he made the whole thing into a mockery. Damn. He showed us how ridiculous using rhymes in court really were by reciting Thugger's lyrics in the most emotionless way possible. Hey, this is that slime sh Hey, YSL, sh hey, killing 12, sh hey, f a jail, sh hey, so I'm, oh, God. I'm not new to this, hey. If people thought it couldn't get any more ridiculous, they were in for a surprise. Because oh, it was about to take an even crazier turn. In a crazy moment, Thug's lawyer Brian Steele, or YSL Steele as he is now officially known, revealed that Mr. Glanville had staged improper meetings with a witness for the prosecution. Okay, well listen, if you don't tell me how you got this information, then you and I are going to have some problems. After he threatened to hold Steele under Damn. contempt of court for refusing to divulge his source, the lawyer was taken into custody, with Glanville commanding that Steele spends 20 days in jail, served over the course of 10 weekends for contempt of court. All right, counsels, I've made a clarification or uh, to the order of contempt. Mr. Steele, I am going to hold you under, um, still hold you in summary criminal contempt for your failure to comply with my earlier order to today. I'm going to order that you be taken into custody, uh, incarcerated in the Fulton County Jail for more, no more than 20 days for this contempt. But somehow, still even stacked that in his favor, asking to be held alongside Thugger to work on their defense. I'd ask that I can uh, be with Mr. Williams and we work on our case all weekend, for all those weekends. Otherwise, I can't prepare. I speak with Mr. Williams all the time. That's up to you. And sir, I will, sir, if, if, that, if that comes to pass, um, you have my uh, support. I will, I, will, I will talk with our sheriff. The end result of all of this was another prime. Bro, the lawyer was, a, was willing to go to prison for this case. That's crazy. Dude, that's a good lawyer. Wait. I'm starting to get the picture of how he, uh, how he made it out. Prime example of Fulton County having no clue what to do when it came to this case. Because just like Willis and other prosecutors, the judge was turning the whole thing into a farce. This is what kills me. I have no idea if Young Thug did any of these yeah. crimes. But this clown show judge just fucked up so bad. 
Not only are they going to jail for it, the city of Atlanta is probably going to have to pay millions from their successful lawsuit. After a lot of back and forth, including attempts to block the motion by Fannie Willis, Judge Glanville was removed from the trial in July, and since then, Thug fans have celebrated. Because with him in charge, it looked like YSL was never going to get a fair shot. I have never seen a judge more infused and possessed by the spirit of main character syndrome than when it comes to the horrible Judge Glanville. I would almost plead- That's- that is so bad for his career. That is so bad. Like, no one's gonna think that he's gonna have a fair trial if they have this judge. But it just- it just makes it-, it, it I wonder if he steps down. 25 to life just to avoid seeing his shiny scalp again. With the case looking more and more ridiculous every day, YSL Steel started going at the prosecution with so much venom that he had Thug laughing in court. And I'm getting smashed with a baseball bat and I have no idea where to hit because I don't, I don't have anything. And I've asked for reports, Judge Glanville. He's laughing because the whole thing is the biggest joke in history. Yeah. At times, Thug even took a moment to vibe to his own tracks in court, even as they were trying to use them against him. <laughs> All the while, Judge Whitaker was getting increasingly enraged at how unprepared the prosecution were to present their case. But it is baffling to me that somebody with the number of years of experience that you have continues to seemingly purposefully hide the ball to the extent you possibly can for as long as you possibly can. And I really don't want to believe that it is purposeful, but honestly, after a certain number of Jeez. times, to wonder how it could be anything but that, unless it is just that you are so unorganized oh that you are throwing God. this case together as you try it. But one pivotal display she of the prosecution's incompetence came during the trial of Thug's co-defendant, Qua Morbius Nichols, and it might have changed the course of the whole thing. At one point, the jurors were made aware of an IG post by YSL artist Slime Life Shoddy that contained the hashtag Free Qua. Under Georgia law, the jury isn't permitted to know if a defendant has previously been to prison for fear of prejudicing their opinion so it should have been redacted. With that, Whitaker went off on them again. What I'm yeah. trying to do is fix your sloppiness so that everyone won't have wasted, you know, 10, 12 months of their lives in this trial. I'm sorry y'all have this gigantic, ginormous universe of evidence that maybe if you narrow down, you would not be making these oh kinds my of mistakes. God. After that, everyone was Yo, pretty much convinced the trial was a sham, leaving the way for freedom to come knocking for thugs. I said this long ago and I'll repeat it to the end of days. The YSO trial should have ended a long time ago with a mistrial with prejudice. The yeah, amount of misconduct in this that's trial true. can't be excused. I understand the plea deals, but nobody in the prosecution's office being sanctioned severely only means they do the same to the next one. Right up until the closing statements, the prosecution were screwing up. That day, lyrics that weren't even his were being accredited to him in an attempt to bolster the prosecution's case. Your Honor. The state is talking about things like F the judge and I rep my life for real. That's not even said by Mr. Williams, but they don't care to find out. They are on a tunnel vision to try Dude, to convict. It's already a problem when you try to bring lyrics in, in for evidence. When you don't even spend 30 seconds to figure out who's saying the line is, is just, it's cooked. I wish I would have watched this live. A that's man. crazy. Considering how poorly the state did, it's yeah, that's why I will not miss the YNW melody. melody. The recommendation and give out her own sentence, one which actually let Thug avoid things that he was willing to do just to get out and see his kids. Thug's lawyers literally asked for three years house arrest with an ankle monitor, and the judge was like, "Nah, that won't be necessary." With that oh outcome, God. it's also not shocking that YSL's Yak Gotti is similarly opting Ooh. to steer clear of plea deals and leave his sentencing at the hands of the judge. Despite the miraculous work he pulled off, Brian Steele feels like there's more to be done. And at the minute, he seems to be setting the scene to get even more out of Fulton County for the shoddy way Thug was forced to live during his time in the county. This is not the same as a not guilty verdict. That should have been ranked. But nobody here wakes up every day on a concrete floor that they're calling his bed, gets up at 4.15, gets shackled at his feet, his waist, and his hands, 
comes to the Fulton County Courthouse to be on concrete, eating out of a bag, Doritos is his meal of choice, and then coming to a courtroom and sit there with a leg chain on him every single day and hear lie after lie. So for Jeffrey to go home today and not have another 90 days or 120 days of it, he is very happy. This was not what I wanted. I don't believe that it is just, but I believe that under these circumstances, it is justice for Jeffrey. Nah. Williams, he is delighted as are we. Thank you. But it's not just Steele who seems intent on taking the DA's office down. Thug's father also won't take his foot off their neck. You know what I'm saying? You know, let's, let's make them continue to embarrass themselves. In particular, he blasted the DA for prohibiting him from returning to Atlanta, which is one of the many conditions he's facing in exchange for his release. I'm totally against that because this is where he's from. To have a district attorney take that away from him that isn't a residence from here. She's from another state, you know, and to see her, see her take a man away from where he's from to have to go live somewhere else, that's, a, that's offensive to me. Referred yeah. to as a poison, Fannie Willis and the DA took so much time from Thug. And during that spell inside, he lost his child's mother, his oh. sister, Lil' Keed, and his estranged former rhyming partner, Rich Homie Quan. Now, he Yo, seems bro. intent on rekindling those relationships, including none other than his bond with Gunna. Deemed a snitch by everyone from Lil Baby to Dirk, Gunna has always maintained his innocence. And by the looks of it, Thugger wants to clear his name. However, it's not clear whether that's out of friendship or because there's plenty of money to be made for YSL. And they, they already say Thugger Gunna was a rat when he ratted on about his cousin shit. So Thugger was like me, he, he thinking, man, I know this nigga ain't like that, but this nigga can rank. I'm finna get this fucking money. Sometimes we fuck it up like that, taking off our street shit, trying to chase that bag. And that's what he uh -huh. did. He knew that nigga wouldn't build like that. At the end of the day, what's clear is that Thug got a better outcome than most people hoped for. And when that's you look way at how better than County conducted themselves. That's way better than he would have ever hoped for, probably. I mean, you go in for, for like, probably his charges. I, I still don't know them. I'm going to be straight up. Uh, let me let me look real quick before I just start pulling shit out of my ass. Uh, young Thug. Um, uh, charges. Okay. So... Charges related to gangs, uh, illegal and violent acts, murder, robbery, drug dealing, carjacking. Okay, yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember. Okay, so yeah, all all of that coming in, you're you're not expecting to just walk out, bro. Yo, stupid prosecutors, man. It's the hard state to argue to that they got anyone else to blame. Take for a big hit for this. The state wanted them so bad they screwed themselves over. They're so lucky that this was not a federal RICO case. The feds would have never fucked up this True. case like the state did. While this is definitely a win, it's important to point out that they will still be trying to jam him up at any opportunity. As yeah, academics explain, they purposefully placed obstacles in his way to leading a life that even vaguely resembles normality. Here's my personal opinion on, on everything with the Thug thing. I'm gonna be honest with you, I think Thug got a tremendous deal. Like, we could have never expected something like this yeah, to happen. No. However, it's kind of a trick, right? By the way, we already seen one person on a YSL case who took a plea. They already got caught up and getting sent back to prison. So the possibility of you taking 15 with all these stipulations is kind of to set you up. But it's probably nothing that is going to ever equate freedom. So Young Thug right now being free, that's the biggest thing. I know some of his fans think he beat the case. He definitely didn't beat the case. Beat the case means you got no stipulations. So while it is yeah. a victory, it's not a flawless one. Thug it, it's not, it's that not that it's not that he beat the case. It's the fact that he's able to just walk out and pretty much be as free as you can be when sh shit like this is going on, right? Like, yeah, they're obviously going to put obstacles. They're not going to take the big hit. They're going to try and paint you to be a criminal uh, no matter what because of how bad they handled everything. They have to make up for it somehow. They have to. And so if that if that's like getting Young Thug back into a courtroom, they'll do whatever they can. And that's not that's not a normal life, but you are still free. Yeah, I think he just wanted to beat the shit, but the prosecutors was kind of like, 
but they're rookies, bro. And I'm gonna, and this is what I'm gonna say. The Young Thug thing is a win, but it's also a huge setup. If you gonna tell me that they gonna monitor him on a probationary basis for 15 years, can't be, can be in Atlanta, can't communicate with co-defendants or gang members, he can't rap about, he can't promote any music that has to do with what they believe is gang activity. Well, that, yo, that nigga's always gonna talk about- Okay, okay, but again, like, music can't be used as evidence, dude. It, it, it can't be used as evidence. How are they gonna say that he can't make music? Like, in general, like, what, what is he supposed to do? Go around preaching gospel music? Him and his niggas doing his thing. They might consider that gang activity. He might be like, yo, me and my niggas, like, yo, we going to the park getting lit. <laughs> Rather than accept that they slipped up, the DA seemed sour, even as they responded uh, to I'd the be verdict. Sour. Focusing on their potential consolation W as opposed to the laundry list of failures that they endured. The convictions in this case represent accountability for admitted members of YSL, a violent street gang. Mr. Williams chose to plead guilty to all of the charges against him and allow the judge to determine his sentence. But even though his career and life will have to go down a different trajectory, Fulton County hasn't harmed Thug the way they hoped. In fact, his reputation has only been enhanced by making it out of the case with only a slap on the wrist. Jeffrey has the opportunity to do so much good in the community, and when you get blessed with this kind of second chance, it's for a reason. So I'm very, very intrigued Amen. to see what he does in the future. And I'm rooting for him to do all the right things because you know them people want to violate the stipulations they of that sure probation, do. and mm -hmm. you know those folks going to be on your ass, so please do the right thing. But I need the record to show that Young Thug got to be one of the top five real street rappers ever. Yes. At least top three at this point. I don't know what this man has done or has not done as far as the street's concerned, but I do know he got jammed up for it and didn't say a word. Sit. Held it so Everybody in their mama was testifying against Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah. They was pointing him out to be the leader of this organized crime family. Yep. And that man... Dude, it helps his image so much, man. It, it helps it so much. Dude, that's crazy. Oh, and didn't God. say a damn thing, not a tweet. But he can't even rap about it anymore. Nothing. The nigga in me is impressed. After a very, very close call, it seems like Thugger has overcome the future that Wallow has seemed to predict for him. With some of y'all young niggas in here that still... That still be living that shit. I don't be talking to y'all on Instagram as some square ass lame ass nigga. And the problem is so many niggas is scared of y'all. I'm not scared of no young niggas because I'm not coming at you in the wrong way. I'm coming at you the way your daddy ain't come at you, the way your, your, your uncle couldn't come at you because them niggas was dead in prison. So I ain't going to be on the gram talking some sucker shit to you just like I checked the young nigga in here. If you don't want to be an artist, take it to the streets. But don't bring the dumb shit in the game trying to prove that you're a fucking real nigga. And while you proving that you're a real nigga, you gonna finesse yourself out of position and out of opportunity that can change your family and generations in your family life. Coming off two years in jail True. and a whole host of mismanagement. He's just a, he's a brutally he honest a person. Shot. And by the sounds of it, he fully intends to take it. Welcome home, Jeffrey Williams. It's not a day overdue. As always, it's your boy Luesta, and I want to thank y'all for watching today's video. Please drop a like Yo, and w subscribe mans. if you haven't already. And Is that a Wii remote? And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Yo, W video. I can't believe I put that uh put that out for so long. Probably because I've been caught up doing other stuff. But like realistically, dude, I gotta I gotta start like watching cases, dude. Live, of course. Matt, I I'm excited. I'm excited for the for the YNW Melly case. It's September of next year, but I mean, I'm still excited about it, of course.